Hey, what's happening, everybody? It is Thursday night. Time for the episode of Thrifty Business. I'm your one host, Jason Thrifts. Hi, and I'm your co-host, Debbie W. Hi, Debbie. How you doing? We weren't planning on a hat party, but let's introduce our guests. Yeah. And you'll understand why it became a hat party out of the blue. So here we go. <laughs> Now it's time for Jay's Tiki Talk. Each week, I drink a different rum out of a different tiki mug and try and match it up to my guest. Joining us this week are Riley and Rachel. Hello, guys. How are you? We're good, Jason. How are you? Good. When I uh, turned your camera on and I saw this, Debbie's like, hang on. And she ran and got a hat. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, let me go find a hat. So I got this, uh, this nice bad boy for sale in case anyone's looking for a mini hat with a big bow on it. <laughs> I like that hat. We do too. All right. So uh, tonight, uh, I busted out a mug that I have used in the past, but it is so apropos. We have a mother and daughter team, and it's the one and only Tiki mug that has a baby inside of it. <laughs> and that's awesome. Riley, how old are you going to be in two months? Uh, 18. So I'll be a dancing queen anymore. I busted out the Florida Kanye 18. So. Oh, and I was born in Tampa, so that's a double whammy. <laughs> so there you go. Debbie, what do you got tonight? Oh, I have a uh, Trader Vic's new. Oh, look at that. Wow. Sparkling water in it. Cheers. <laughs> no, Debbie, that's just straight vodka. That's what you got. <laughs> and Riley, I saw you had a fancy drink there. That is correct. I've got LaCroix in my mermaid cup. I love that cup. If that cup, if you list that cup, let me know well by I love that cup. What <laughs> you got, Rachel? I am actually drinking out of a Muppets glass and it's just some raspberry tea. <laughs> Muppets, I love that. There it is. All right, so Riley and Rachel are here for uh three different things. Mother and daughter team, that's always cool. Brand new, brand new sellers, brand new, and they did the 400 mile garage sale. So all kinds of fun stuff. So we'll bid you adieu for a little bit while we knock out the segments and we'll see in a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the baby, the baby in the mug represents how new they are as sellers. Yeah, that too. That too. I was looking for some other mug, but I'm like, when you have a mother or daughter, you can't beat that. That's perfect. I mean, not, not that Rachel looks like a crazy monster, but you can't beat that. I mean, it's just the only mug like that. So. Hey, it's right. just business. You never know what's going to pop up. And cheers, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. Thank you very much in the chat. All right, let's get right into it, chat. And now it's time for our scores of the week. These are the items that you should be on the lookout for when you're out thrifting. Oh, Ooh. I'm first. Books. I don't, I don't think I showed this before. I was, you know, sometimes I have to go back and see what I already showed. This whole set of um, international piano books I picked up for $15 and sold them. We took a best offer of 100 That was nice. Yeah, it was. It was nice. So it's weird. A lot of people said, uh, a lot of people say it was buffering or lagging. Oh. Uh, let, let me hang on before we go on. Let me look at let me look at the view on YouTube. Let's get right into it, shall we? <laughs> and now it's time for our scores of the week. These okay, looks good for me. So wherever you're at, something must be happening at your end. I do apologize, but uh, uh, that's weird. Buffering for Linda, who's on the West Coast. Lisa says completely frozen out, but it's so weird. I just watched the YouTube feed, Deb, and it's working for me. Well, it's the whole show. It's not just one of us. Yeah, but it's it's weird. Hmm. Yeah, but I do love Ginny's hat. She says my hat looks like, I mean, her comment, my hat looks like an Oklahoma red dust storm. <laughs> hmm. Everybody refresh. Three, two, one. It could be me and I have a dual Wi-Fi and the one seems to be out. So, all right. We'll, we'll work on it. I mean, nothing to work on. We'll just hope. Well, how about we hope? Hey, nothing's going to stop. The show must go on. Okay, uh, some anime books. Um, paid six bucks for these. So, I, you know, I, I kind of started wondering if those weren't so popular anymore. But then I came across a whole bunch of them, and they are still popular. But like I always tell everybody, find DVD animes. Those are where the money is. Ah. Oh. What? Where, where'd <laughs> you get this? Same place with the shirt you're wearing? I did. I don't know if you can I see me. I do love shirt. 
So because, I, because of Jason, we were in Reno on vacation and he said, hey, are you anywhere near da da da? Well, we sure were, we were half hour away. So we went out there and it was uh, the Paradise, uh, Cheeseburger Paradise gals, people were having a big sale. And so I think we got like 10 of these. Some of them have a lot of um, hot glue on it because they were for decor, but this is the first one we've ever found. And we got like five or six, we paid $5. And I, I know, I think we picked up 10, mm -hmm. but yeah. So now we're part of that group. So uh, the more jewelry on the hat, the better. And yeah, I just watched the feed again. The feed for me on YouTube is smooth. So uh, well, I don't know. I mean, it's so weird that people in different parts of the country are like, uh-oh. But when I look at the feed, it's there's no hiccups. Are they maybe having storms or something? But what we've seen from people in Chicago and the West Coast, like in Canada, like I don't even understand. I, I don't understand. Uh. Yes, I have my mom's Wi-Fi. <laughs> Some people say it's better. Oh, uh, Wanda said she refreshed and it was better. So anyway, okay, right. we like to find these ice skates. I think this is about the third or fourth pair that we've sold. We have another set for men right now listed that we sold. Um, we sold these for $54.99 and we paid $5 for them. And I think, yeah, I think these are little kids. So we always look for these at thrift stores. Nice. We sold pretty quick too. Oh, I'm up. <laughs> I was like, oh, one more? <laughs> did I get all your scores? You did, I think so. Okay, cool. Yeah, just playing with the uh, the feed. All right, I'm watching on my phone now, too. Okay, Linda wants to know what my shirt says. So can you guys all see that? Yeah, hold on. I'm getting big. Oh, okay, make me big. There we go. Cheeseburger. My Cheeseburger, title. Rock, rock and roll. Why, Leia? Leia. Such a great T-shirt. I, I love the blue, the blue kind of tie-dye look on it. All right. Well, if you can't get to Wailea, maybe you can get to Long Beach, and maybe you can go back to 1983 when this Grand Prix was ran. Uh, this was part of the hats I picked up for a quarter apiece, and uh, sold for 22 bucks this week. How ironic! Is a fez is a hat. You sold a hat, and we're all wearing hats. There you go. Yeah. Uh, this sold so quick. It is part of the uh, Ralph Lauren line. It's called Denim and Supply. And I've sold the matching jacket for a lot of money in the past. Sold so quick, I assumed, and I feel sorry I assumed this, that Kelly mispriced it. But when I looked, we were the highest price sold in the last 90 days. So it goes back to if you don't ask for it, you can't get it. The only one higher was $2 higher, and that one was new with tags. Oh, wow. Everybody else was less than us. So, Good job, Kelly. Uh, but keep your eyes open for Ralph Lauren denim and supply. And make sure you're selling on other platforms. Here's my Macari sale from this week. Woohoo! Ooh, nice. Uh, picked up these DC Justice League Converse down in Atlanta for $25 at Buffalo Exchange and sold them last night for 68 bucks. And I thought those, I thought those were palm trees. It was like a, a Hawaii scene. <laughs> <laughs> nope. It's uh, Wonder Woman and Robin and Batman. Lori Watson said she found her first Fez hat this week. Yay! Nice. And uh, Wanda, not that you're going to find this specific tiki mug, but if you ever find tiki mugs, and man, we had someone on the thrifting board just 20 minutes ago find one of uh, like one of the Holy Grails at her Alabama thrift store. Oh, nice! Yeah. I see our guest going what for three dollars. It's worth like 350 bucks. But if you ever find them with the COA or a little card talking about what it is, make sure in your first picture you display it with the card. That should always be in the first picture to let everyone know that it comes with the COA or the little recipe card or whatever is inside of it. I like that mug too. Oh, I like yeah. that mug. <laughs> And now it's time for our CD and cassette scores of the week. And as always, we start with flipping cassettes. And what's great is since I prepped the show, I've sold two more cassettes today. yoo -hoo, Next week's already taken care of. All right. Now, I expect, I expect $20 for Black Sabbath Greatest Hits on cassette used. What, what caught me off guard was Ambrosia on cassette used for $20 that I picked up. At Savers for a buck forty nine. Now, if you don't think you know Ambrosia, if you go to YouTube later and look up biggest part of me, if you're our age, if you're not Riley's age, you'll know this song for sure. Trust me, you you're like, oh, I had no clue who sang that. It's one of those songs, Deb. But okay. every single one of us knows biggest part of me. So twenty dollars for a used Ambrosia cassette. Those That's of you who know Ambrosia right now, you're like, what? 
20 <laughs> bucks. And I got it at Savers. You never know what you're going to find. And now we go from flipping cassettes to flipping CDs. All right. I did this one in the tease. I took out the Joan Rivers part and I asked if anyone knew who it was. And a couple of people knew right away it was Joan Rivers, a very early Joan Rivers CD. Because once I announced it was Joan Rivers on the, on the preview video, people were like, that was Joan Rivers? Yes, a very, very young Joan Rivers. What caught my eye was her, her pin because her some of her jewelry sells, I think, for good money. Mm -hmm. That's what you were pointing out was the jewelry you sold. But Yep, so uh, I picked this up at a record store in Burbank for $4 and I sold it for 29 bucks. Wow. All right, Pumpkinhead, you would think would have something to do with Halloween, but it does not. It is a, ra a rapper, a rapper you ain't never heard of, independent rapper. And it's one of the things I, I taught in my flipping CDs courses uh, picked this up for uh, $8 and sold it for almost 42 bucks. Had it listed for a while, but it's one of those things. It's not like Wu-Tang Clan or Public Enemy. Not everyone knows Pumpkin Hats. So you're just waiting for the right customer to come along. But speaking of Halloween, what better week to sell a Halloween soundtrack for $60 than two weeks before Halloween? Uh, there's been many, many Halloween movies, and a bunch of them... The soundtracks are out of print and worth some good money. I've got the uh, Curse of Michael Myers up right now. Hopefully, I'll have that to share next week. Uh, but anytime you see any Halloween soundtrack, stop, look it up. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm bummed, Deb. I didn't have a $100 CD this week, but I did have two $60 CDs. So I'm not too bad. Hey, that's 120 right? <laughs> yeah. This is uh, Man from Uncle and more music from the Man from Uncle uh, 60s show. Uh, music done by Hugo Montenegro, and I think, as you can see, six bucks, and I sold it for sixty bucks. Yay! That's mind blowing. Just think how many of those are out sitting in a state home, you know, people's estate yep. sales under their beds, and huh, cool. Yep. Uh oh, people say they need to buffer again. I know it's weird. I, I was watching my phone while you were talking. The phone was fine. Hey, wait, hold up! Don't forget about me. <laughs> Whoops, now it's time for Stacy's Budget Bin Scores. I love that. All right, how about a little Mickey Unwrapped? Mickey Wrapping. <laughs> uh, wow. Picked it up for a buck ninety-five at Rasputin's up in the Bay Area, and we sold it for $23. Wow, her prices are going up. Do you notice that? Her sell prices are climbing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that could be. There could be so many people online tonight. I mean, I just don't know what to say because... Yeah. The two times I've watched the feed, it was fine. And my mom's seen it just fine. Here's the weird part. My mom's like, it's fine for me. Yeah, refresh. <laughs> Wanted some refreshing help. That's now, all the thing is, refresh. Yes, <laughs> Rachel just messaged me. We broke the internet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many viewers do we have? Uh, mm -hmm. We have 91 right now, so. Ooh. Thumbs up. <laughs> And now it's time for our duds of the week. Do not let our mistakes be yours. Well, oddly enough, both of my duds have been listed since 2018. Um, oh, I'm seeing a buffer on the phone now, Deb. Uh-oh. Anybody home? Do you guys hear us? I thought this was a really cool graphic shirt. I don't know. Maybe we need to rearrange our keywords, but non-wing world championship t-shirt. Hoosier. Huh. I don't know, but it's still sitting here since 2018. So if anybody thinks that shirt was cool and wants to make an offer, hello. <laughs> now uh, I wonder what should we do because I see it now. Um, do you can you pause and just take a break? <laughs> I mean, can we just chit chat and then? All right. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna reset my Wi-Fi. I'll be gone. You'll still be here. So just keep talking about uh, this T-shirt, would you? Okay. <laughs> well, this T-shirt I had I had to bring my 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 host left, so I had to bring in my co co-host. Um, so anyway, I I love these really bright graphic shirts, and it's been listed since 2018, so nobody's buying it. Um, but I don't know anything about World Championship non wings. <laughs> Maybe it's not a big deal, but anything with cars and bright colors, and um, so I thought it was kind of cool. Um, so I don't know who can hear. We can hear each other. Yes, we can. 
So uh, what else is going on out there? In the oh, guess what? I'm in the middle of jury duty from like a week ago. And I don't know what's going on, but I have to call at uh, 530 and find out if I get to go in tomorrow. Hopefully not. I was didn't have to come in today. That's why I got to co-host. Otherwise, my better half, Bill, was going to fill in for me. That would have been fun, huh? <laughs> but I was going to write him out a script so that he didn't miss a beat. But he would probably be better than me because I think he's quicker on his feet thinking than I am. Um, so anyway, I don't have any knock-knock jokes. <laughs> so I hope everybody's having good sales. Um, Q4, where everybody's anticipating that Q4 is going to be off the hook this year. A lot of people shopping. And I think um, I've been telling people, if you're going to do your online shopping for Christmas, start now. Buy now. Get it home. Get it in your house. Because as we get closer to, you know, Black Friday is probably going to be a lot of sales. And then after that, who knows, we might have to all have our own Yoda babies to go get our stuff from the warehouses for us. Um Oh, so you guys are still, I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I hope that um, the replay will be okay. I don't know enough about this stuff that maybe later on when the show's over, we'll have the replay. We'll be, we'll be better. Um, did you like my, my boo apron? I got that at Winco today for $2.88. I think I'm going to wear it when we pass out candy for the kids for Halloween. Usually we leave. Uh, we usually leave and go to the movies or something, but I thought this year, which whoever's allowed to trick or treat, um, I think it's going to be a really big thing for the kids. Maybe just maybe my grandkid, our grandkids coming over. And um, I, I saw on Facebook today that if you have a purple pumpkin in front of your house for Thanksgiving and uh, oh, Halloween, it means that you're handing out candy and no one in your house has tested positive for COVID. So I think what we're going to do this year is get out our um, big pop up tent that we got at Costco, and then he'll he and I'll just sit out front. In the, in the yard and pass out candy to the neighbors just to kind of make it good for Hi. the kids. Hi. All right. It should be better. Welcome back. Do you Let's think hope. replay will be like this too? Or will yeah. It? Oh, okay. I, I can, I can uh, unless whatever you were teaching was awesome, uh, not that it wouldn't be, but I can edit out uh, the, the, that part at the end. It was my best knock-knock joke ever. Oh, well, then I don't want to edit that out. All right. <laughs> So uh, it's a little better. All right, we'll go. We'll go with a little better. Sweet, because at this point, after rebooting everything, there's not much more I could do to make it way better. So Nanette asked, "How long do we keep an item listed?" I usually just live keep it till it sells. Uh, what I no, need to we look at Debbie's does far too long. When I hear things like 15, 20, 14. 20, yeah, I, I don't think I have any fourteen yet. I don't. I don't know. They're tucked away. I already listed them. You know what I mean? They're not in my way. I have the storage. Hey, hey now. Hey now. What? <laughs> All right, tell, tell us about this dud. Same thing. It's been this for a while. These great courses used to sell really well. And I have a feeling that great courses website might have lowered their price. I mean, I had checked once and found that to be true. And I, it could be streaming now, too. So um, but but with this, you get the guide and things. So this one's been hanging around for a while. And I, I should pay better attention and go in and just lower the price. But I figure if someone makes an offer, you know, so lower that price, get rid of it. <sighs> All right, this is part of a box that I got from Goodwill Blue Boxes, uh, oh. part of a band box. Some stuff is good, and other stuff is you just hope it goes. 21 Pilots, although a great band, uh, a band that probably Riley would know over Ambrosia, that's for dang sure. Yep, she gave me the sign. Yep. Um, but they're, they're so um, licensed everywhere that when someone offered me, uh, actually it was, yeah, 12 bucks for the shirt today, but it's going international, so I made $5 on shipping. So it ended up being a $17 shirt, so it wasn't too bad. But, you know, you, you, I've already got the product. It came in a big box. The good stuff will make me the good money. But if I can unload the rest of the stuff and still make a couple bucks on each one, not too shabby. And but, you never know when that's going to draw someone into your store to look for something right. else. Loss leader. This one, though, I'm like, look at this yeah. little birch cat purse bag. I No one's ever made me an offer on it. I don't understand. I wonder so, if Laura Lurch has kind of lost her... I'm guessing so, but still, I'll, I'll, I'll take a dumb offer on it. Come on now, and you like anyone likes Laurel Birch? You uh, have the word. You don't have cats in your title. Yeah, dude, it's the last word. Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah, I was saying. Well, I, I I'll tried to go off on some old assistant, but no, I do. Uh, so, Tiki Bug Music, I'll cut you a deal. Come get it. Let me see what the chat's saying. You make a good Christmas present. 
Ooh, allergy-free nuts. Oh, it's a reason for the purple pumpkins. I like that too, because, oh, I'll have to make sure I don't give out. Oh, maybe I need a red pumpkin now or a different color pumpkin. And now it's time for Where in the World Did Our Stuff Go? If you are not shipping internationally, you are leaving out 7.3 billion with a B potential customers. Like 12. Hi. Hi. Um, I did a little retail arbitrage at Ross and I think these shoes, I think I paid like $9. They were on clearance. We bought several pair. Oh, it's a sprint car. Okay, hold on. Thank you so much. I'm adding that down. I knew that I recognized that little car. So anyway, I thought these shoes were really crazy. In Jason's term, badass. Look how hip. they're like this high, the heels. I say that's um, uh... it's big. Anyway, they went to Quebec. And I forgot how much you sold them for. I didn't pay attention. I think they sold for like $34. So not you, you didn't pay attention. That's the whole point of this. this I know. I know. I get so busy. <laughs> what I And see, look, I even have a script. I know. I what the <laughs> heck? All right. <laughs> Quebec, is, Quebec is really international. That's just our, you know, that's just, you know, the attic of the United our States. Cousins. Yeah. How about Viking Norway? And that's where my Ouija board went. Yay. So I showed that on a haul, I think, like a week ago and uh, went for like 22 bucks. But with with the conversion uh, on the service I used to do international, I actually made like 12 bucks on the shipping. So, you know, so essentially uh, I sold this Ouija board for 30 bucks. So I'm like, yay. Did you so, say you used pirate ship for that? Yeah. You, yeah. Okay. So yeah. One in Vi Viking, Viking, Viking Norway is going to open the portal to hell. Oops, that's not a dog of the week. I don't really have to change my thing. I'm so flummoxed from all that buffering. Oh, and I didn't catch it either. Dad. Yeah, that's not a dog. That's a where in the world, people. Where that's in the world me. are we going? Huh? I got them all, <laughs> all like stress. And now it's time for You Have Got to Be Shipping Me. What to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping. Okay, so I have to be on, on the chat. It said blue pumpkins are allergies, so my purple pumpkin is safe. I don't have one yet, but okay. Anyway, okay. Um, so that fan, I showed that a couple of weeks ago when we sold it. I, well, I used to sell home interiors, and that was one of our big things that we sold. So anyway, we sold it. I picked up the Goodwill for $4.99. And the thing with these fans, about 99% of the time, they've been painted. So when I saw this one in the original color, I was like, that's really cool. But how are we going to ship it? So these little scrap came out of something we bought that had those uh, cardboard things in the corners. And so I save all this stuff. I mean, I had, to, I had to do a major cleaning in the um, garage not too long. I'll get rid of a bunch of cardboard and stuff, but I save all these weird things. So we flattened them out um, and then made a box. We made a box, big old box to put this big old fan thing in. So those little pieces of whatever for corners that I saved really came in handy. I know exactly, I told them, hold on, I got the right thing. <laughs> so save stuff. And if people say, why are you saving cardboard? Because I'm gonna need it. I like that. That's awesome. All right. I showed this uh, on the preview. So uh, this was the Tiki Oasis Arizona mug. The Tiki Oasis Arizona didn't happen. I was supposed to speak at it. It's supposed to happen in April. We know what happened with that. Got switched to October. We still aren't having big events. And so they sold the mugs. Obviously, they needed to make their money back on the mugs. Mine's the one on the left. Mine showed up just fine. I, I will say they only wrapped in paper. They didn't wrap in bubble. But as you can see, this mug has a very small point in the middle uh, down to the bottom there that could easily break like the one on the right. So here's my recommendation. Get uh, uh, one section of bubble and, and, and fold it in half and then in half. So it's thick and long and wrap it around that lower part that is very skinny and it'll make it as wide as the top of the mug and then you wrap the whole thing. And if they would have done that, I don't think they'd have any breakage. Now, I, in all fairness, I think this is the only broken one, but I understand why it broke because there's that point where there's just not a lot there. And so with only using paper to wrap it, uh, it's a bummer. And I needed a pull noodle. Now, do you own the broken one? Is that yours too? No, no, that was somebody else's. I okay. just happened to see it in my feed. I'm like, well, I'll talk about that because mine showed up okay. Mine's the one left. I'd be gluing that back together and pretending yeah, I yeah. <laughs> Mine is definitely the one on That's, the left. That is an incredible to keep Yeah, it's such a cool mug. And now it's time for the thrifty tips of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you out when you're outsourcing. Okay, so. Okay, I'm intrigued by this uh, variety of stuff. 
<laughs> I know. I was like, oh, sourcing tip, huh? We were just up in Tahoe for a couple of days. Oh my gosh, it was gorgeous up there. But there are, there's a Goodwill, there's a, hosp a hospital type thrift store, and we always have to go. Um, some days we're like, no, we want to just play on the beach or whatever. But I just want to encourage people, take some time when you're out and about out of your area, find a couple thrift stores. You don't have to take a lot of time. You can do a quick walkthrough. So this was what we found in two of them. Who knew we'd find a Seahawks uh, Wilson 3 t-shirt up in Tahoe and see the little um, rattan plate holder thingies back there. I wasn't sure because they're painted, but uh, one of them has a Hong Kong sticker on the back. So I thought, hey, so we found some books and then those melamine dishes, uh -huh, those are staying with me. I just <laughs> like, only paid 15 bucks a lot. So, and I got some earrings. So I wore one of each of them. I bought myself some earrings. <laughs> but, uh, so the Walking Dead, that's when I was um, scanning when I got a weird sound on my eBay app. I'm like, what's that noise? So um, that's all. I'm going to sell all those and the other little. But then Bill had a little bit of a thrifting encounter. So he's going to explain who is Wilson number three. Oh, Russell Wilson is the quarterback for the Seahawks. Uh huh. Uh, so Bill had picked up this shirt. He's here. Mr. Bill is here to tell us all about his. Oh, hat. nice. It is a hat party. Forget, that, huh? Forget the shirt. Where's the fuzz hat you so just the had? Hat. Oh, that way. <laughs> We're multitasking. There we go. There we go. Now we're talking. Okay. Yeah. Fez. So I'll so, let him explain. Did you start in Riley and Rachel? <laughs> so here's here's the shirt I saw on the men's cool. back. And I could see it from a long way away that it was bark cloth, you know. Um, and I and I looked at it and I looked at it. Okay, let me put the back on it so you can kind of see the, the tiki that's on the back of it there. Woohoo. And uh I looked and looked and looked at it, just trying to decide, should I get it? Should I get it? Uh, I threw it in my cart. And as soon as I did, I had one guy come over and give me the history of this shirt and how old it is and where it's from. And and another guy came up and said, I wanted that one. It's my size. And uh, we got into a little bit of an encounter there. But, you know, we walked out with it. But, you know, it's got it's got some street cred on it. You know, it's it's. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It, it's in pretty bad shape, but and the collar too. And the collar's got a little wear. Uh, what's the brand? It's Kualani, uh, in made in Honolulu. Have you heard of that one, Jason? Yep. And okay. It's, it's, he, the one guy who gave me the story that it's from the 1950s because it's got this type of a tag on it, and so it's really let's, old. Let's see the, let's see the tag. Uh, let's see if I can get it for you. Worn. Can you. Oh yeah, it's pretty. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Pretty, you know. But anyway, it's really worn and. And I got it because I thought, well, maybe someone would buy it for the material. But what was the price on it? It was five ninety nine. Five ninety nine. So I went up to the clerk and I said, you know, this is like a rag. I said, how about a little <laughs> discount? So she sold it to me for two ninety nine. Dollar ninety nine. Oh, a dollar yeah. Okay. So that's another part of my sourcing tip. Don't be afraid to ask because I wouldn't yeah. think to do that. I would have just said, hey, it's it's nice. I like it. And when two other people say, oh, I would have bought that, I'm like, it's mine. Get away. Yeah. So but yeah. it would have been really nice. Is I, I figure it would have been around $150 if, if it was in good shape. And, and I don't know, Jason, if I should try to repair the hem, cut it, make it look nice. That's nice. a good question. And I, and I don't really have that answer. So maybe we'll pop in pop it into one of the uh, Tiki groups. Okay. Ask that question. But in the in the meantime, it'll be a really a for sale post because people will be like, oh, I'll buy that and fix it. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. That'll, be our, that'll be our tip next time. Yeah. So yeah, give me, give me good pictures. But I'll first, I'm going to try it on and see if it fits me. All right. Well, yeah. Don't. <laughs> so anyway, go thrifting when you're on vacation because you, you find different kinds of things and um and makes it fun. Yeah. All right. So I missed this. Unfortunately, I didn't get it. Uh, but this is, and I'll show you what it is, uh, three dots and a dash set of five tiki mugs from the bar in Chicago. Here's what those mugs sell for. If you wait, you can get 100 for each of them. But as of this moment, if you sold them all, you would get three fifty. So someone got a screaming deal at one hundred and fifty bucks. Uh, so look for things that you know are good and lots that the seller is lazy. I mean, look at that title: three dots in a dash tiki mug set of five. So what's the three eighty? Is that oh, that's the, the value of them? Yeah. So if you sold them all individually, it's worth double what they paid. So they paid one fifty plus fifty shipping, and so they're worth about four hundred. But if you can wait. Uh, and you'd get a hundred for each of them with the right keywords and the right marketing. So this would actually turn into five hundred dollars. So right. you, you can source without leaving eBay, right? And, and marketplace too, because there was a local guy here who was selling off his tiki mugs, but he wanted top dollar for them. I was just drooling over them, going, "Oh no, nope, that's too much. That's too much." So yeah. 
They're okay. out there. And now it's time for our online selling tips of the week. It doesn't matter if you're selling on Etsy, Depop, Macari, Poshmark, or eBay. These are little tips and tricks to help you when you're selling. Do you go away, you two? <laughs> is that why this is your tip? What's that? <laughs> Did you go away recently? <laughs> we were in Lake Tahoe. So anyway, we, we I wanted to let people know we did the time away. And it was quick and easy, and it worked. For me, for us, personally, you know, you just go on your seller hub and scroll down to the bottom left their time away. Because typically what I will do, what we will do is we'll go through and we'll change our handling time to five days. Typically, that's enough for us because we're not gone for very long. You know, you've got your, your weekends. But a lot of times the bulk edit's all goofed up or if something has an offer on it, it won't change. So it was kind of a hassle. However, we've noticed that when we've even done like a 10 day, cause we go to Vegas, we don't go on vacation. We just go 10 day handling time and boom, boom, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. We're selling stuff the whole time. With this five days takeaway, we didn't sell anything until the very last day. So I thought, wow, I, maybe it's better for us to keep don't use the, the takeaway or gone away or wherever you go away um, and just go back to changing our handling time because that works for us too. And we saw seem to sell more that way. So that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. Yeah. All right. So I uh, had a garage sale this past weekend. If you watched selling past our expiration date on Sunday, you saw the whole full report, but I wanted to point out <clears throat> there really isn't a garage garage sale section on offer up, but Oh, well, I still use OfferUp, and I put tons of records, DVDs, comics, Nerf, and more, and I put it in the music section, I think. So I put up all my pictures for my garage sale, and of all the places I advertise online, I got the most response from OfferUp. So yeah. many questions. So many people showed up because of that. So just because it doesn't have a garage sale section doesn't mean you can't use it. Good. You're just kind of bending the rules a little bit. Well, how did your sale go? Did you sell a lot of stuff? Yes, you didn't watch the show on Sunday? That hurts. Oh, no, sorry. I, I was somewhere doing something. Yeah, well, it's already Thursday. You haven't watched since then? What kind of producer? Well, Sunday morning we were in Emeryville at Trevor Vicks for a scholarship. Yes. And all that night we were watching the Seahawks play from Lake Tahoe, so we were busy. Yes, we did $955 in four hours. Well done. Yeah, but go back and watch an episode if you haven't. Mom talks yeah. about her. She did three days. Stacey and I only did four hours. Our, our bodies hated us after just a four-hour girl sale. <laughs> <laughs> oh good stephanie's giving me tips for that shirt nice all right uh no that's the wrong housekeeping there we go little housekeeping first off everyone who took the flipping vinyl records class the freebie and the master class that was a paid class thank you very much uh we got way more than we expected in the freebie and uh, over two thousand people took that class and the uh the paid master class sold out and so we actually had to do an overflow room. So thank you, everyone. Uh, and it was so great. I started getting messages that night, Deb, after the master class. People realized that things they learned in the master class, they had laying around their house. Uh -huh. I got two messages that night that said, oh, my God, with a picture, I have this. I'm going to go sell it, and it'll pay for the class. Boom. That uh -huh. easy. Awesome. They, didn't have, they didn't have to leave to go source. They paid for the class just sitting at home. So those How many people are going to their parents and grandparents and their oh, neighbors? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because they're out there. So those of you who missed out on the class, it is an amazing class. Anyone that took it will tell you that. I'm not just patting myself on the back. I do I do over-deliver when I do classes, especially yeah. ones that I charge for. I make sure that you definitely get your money's worth. It will be available as a paid download in the near, near future. So uh, stay tuned to all my channels. It was great. All right, let's talk about the shows we got coming up real quick, and then we'll get our guests in here. Nope, that's not what I need. Nope, that's not what I need. There it is. Whoops, had it backwards. Okay, uh, Secret Beachcombers, you're just learning this right now. Our guest expert uh, of the month is going to be Ginny. Uh, who, uh, hey, that isn't Santa Claus coming down my chimney. Who is bringing your gifts this year? Santa is not the only person that makes gifts at Christmas time. There are many different types of Santas around the world. So Ginny is going to teach us all about them. So that'll be for the Secret Beachcombers on Wednesday, October 21st at 5 p.m. And then next week, we have, uh, funny enough, we have a return guest, but she's not returning for what she was on the first time for. So Lisa was on uh, a little over a year ago talking about selling Bibles. <clears throat> Lisa teaches a eBay class, like an in-person class, and her class took a field trip last week or two weeks ago to this Ferris wheel. And this Ferris wheel was purchased on eBay. 
So the whole point of the class was don't be afraid to sell big stuff. Debbie and Bill had that big fan. My folks every week have giant stuff. Someone, and we'll talk about that, sold his Ferris wheel on eBay in the state of Oklahoma, bought it, and they all wrote it. So uh, Lisa teaches eBay classes. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about selling big things. And Lisa, like Rachel, has a real job. So uh, how to balance the real job with your eBay job. Now, the following week is going to be our board meeting of the month because it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I want to have breast cancer survivors. So Nadine, who is a breast cancer survivor, is going to be my co-host. And we thought, what better way to get the word out to make sure that people are, are, are checking themselves and getting tested than to have actual breast cancer survivors, uh, men and women. Uh, right now, I have nobody on the show but Nadine. So I just, just announced it right now. If you are a breast cancer survivor, a man or a woman, and you would like to be part of the panel next uh, uh, in two weeks, uh, please reach out to me or Debbie or Nadine, and we will get you on the show. We would ideally like anywhere from four to six people on the panel. Uh, it, it will be talking about your uh, your cancer journey somewhat. Obviously, it's the whole point. We want to make, make, make sure people are aware, uh, but also your eBay journey, you know, and then any other fun shenanigans you want to talk about. And lastly, no mom and I show this Sunday because Stacy and I are starting some new shenanigans. <clears throat> And uh, more details to come, but they start this weekend. And so uh, the the little hint I'll give you is some of you I'll be closer to in the near future. So All there's right. your little hint. But no show this Sunday. But Mama, Mama, Mom and I will be back next Sunday. And Mom just called me before we went live. They sold a giant thing they showed on their hall two weeks ago. So Mom, take pictures and video uh, of the whole packaging tomorrow and horizontally, please. All right. Whew, that was a lot. Yes. Uh, exciting. There's, there's there's the chat. Sounds exciting. So, Nay, if you missed that, we're just talking about uh, in two weeks, you're going to co-host with me on the Breast Cancer Awareness Show. So, uh, Nay will be my co-host for that one. So, there we go. All right. Let's get right to it, shall we? Oops, I went the wrong way. Whoops. And now it's time for the Thrifty Business Special Guest of the Week. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll get rid of that so you can see me and Debbie. Hold, please. <laughs> Welcome back. What's Hi. happening, Larry and Rachel? How are you guys? We are good. How are y'all? We are great. So I, I forgot where you're at. Or what part of Alabama are you in? We're in Huntsville. So that is south? North. 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 Okay. Yeah. We're so about an hour and a half from Nashville. All right. So let me show you what someone picked up in southern Alabama. Now, look. You can find tiki anywhere, but really, Alabama is not a hotbed for finding tiki. No. It truly isn't. <laughs> so, for a person to find a holy grail today and have you guys on tonight would seem so fitting. I'm like, how crazy. So, uh, Alabama your whole life? No, I actually grew up in Tampa, but Riley was born in Alabama, so. Uh, whoops. Nope, nope. I want that, and I want that. Sorry. <laughs> This whole buffering still has me flummoxed. There we go. So my uh, my aunt and my uncle and their two kids moved to Alabama when the kids were my my uh, my cousin. Uh, one cousin was like a preteen, and my other cousin was a teen, and they developed the Alabama accent. They were from Cleveland, and when we would talk, they would say they don't have it. But I'm like, yeah, you don't hear yourself. <laughs> we don't think that we have accents for sure. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what what excites me is anytime I see kids, Deb, which is going to be weird because people know I'm not a big fan of kids. But when I see kids getting involved with uh, online selling or any business where they understand the value of the hard work, they understand the value of money, uh, because I started working when I was 10 and I've never not worked. So uh, I've always been a hustler and a hard worker. And we've had other mom and daughters on that when I reach back out, hey, you guys want to do a follow up? Nah, she got bored and quit. <laughs> no, no. <That's> not me. <laughs> definitely not. No. She's going for it. She wants her own eBay store. <laughs> so, she yeah, oh, thrifts more than I do, honestly. Uh, yeah, I went thrift shopping today, too. Yeah. Ooh. And did you find some good I did find some good stuff. Yeah. I went uh, with some of my thrift store friends. 
She also volunteers at our local thrift store that um, supports the um, animal shelter. So, I would say I would rather do this than babysit. I babysat when I was in high school, and I think this is more fun than babysitting. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Plus, right. volunteering at the thrift store, they kind of give her first opportunity at stuff too, so that's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> well, or during yeah. the weekend, so I can buy more stuff. For me. <laughs> and here's the deal, Riley. Let me tell you, when we were kids. It wasn't cool to say you went to a garage sale and thrifting. So you didn't talk about that. You definitely did not. I never talked about me going to garage sales and stuff. It just wasn't a cool thing. And nowadays, that was no different because you find you find neat stuff and then you can show it off on social media. But you've taken that next step. And you're like, I'm going to turn it into money. Yeah, All right. Definitely. So how long have you two been selling online? About two and a half, three weeks now. <laughs> Debbie, they're so babies. They're so young. They're they're they're, they're just in the gest gestation. <laughs> now we can teach them how to do it the right way from the beginning instead of oops, you gotta undo those bad habits. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I probably did two months worth of research. I mean, just watching videos, watching Jason, especially with his mom. Um, those are some of the best videos, just really breaks it down, um, you know, learning the basics, especially about shipping. I think that was my biggest fear was shipping, you know, so I had like this little scale to start with. And I was trying to figure out how much everything weighed. Um, you know, I think that was my biggest fear was shipping. But then once you do it, you know, 15 times, you kind of were like, oh, this isn't so bad. But have you shipped glassware yet? You done glassware? So I actually just shipped earlier this week the horse head cookie jar. Um, it hasn't arrived yet, but I took a ton of pictures. So we are. Hey, 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 hey. Yes. And it's super cool. Yeah. <laughs> Raleigh found that in the state sale for a dollar. We flipped yeah. it for 30. So, so um, where did you hear me first? Do you remember? Yeah, it was actually a podcast um, about entrepreneurship, um, and you were the guest on the show, and this girl was talking about having a brick and mortar and selling online and stuff like that, and your phone must have dinged 15 times during the interview saying that you had sales on eBay, and I stopped listening to her podcast, <laughs> immediately found you online, and started following you because I was like, that's where it's at. <laughs> well, I'm so glad because, look, there is... A lot of content out there that isn't the greatest. And I was going to say, I was in another group the other day, and they someone had posted, or it was actually this morning, that they sold something to Canada. And they're like, I don't sell internationally, which is foolish in itself. They went so far as to say, I only ship to the lower 48. So I couldn't help myself. And I said, why don't you ship to Hawaii and Alaska? Yeah. Not that there's a ton of customers, but... But they never would answer. And I'm just like, as a leader of a group, I would be all over that going, okay, look, it's your prerogative to ship where you want, but let me show you. If you want to be a good businessman or woman, here's the deal. A, you should ship to any any part of the United States, no matter if it's an island or north of Canada. B, you should ship worldwide because so many international customers want our stuff. Mm -hmm. Our stuff for sure. And I was just shocked that they wouldn't even ship to Alaska and Hawaii. And I know they don't ship to Guam or Puerto Rico. I just know it because they won't ship to Alaska. They're surely not shipping to the U.S. Virgin Islands. Wow. But they yeah. always ship internationally. And I'm just, I'm shocked. I'm shocked at people that are afraid. Now, I get it because I've been doing it for 20 plus years. Deb, how long have you been selling? 2002 and earlier. Okay. So. That's yeah. when I was born. <laughs> no. Oh, God. I feel so old. <laughs> hey, I'm older than you, Jason. <laughs> My wife and I were already in our fourth residence by 2002. <laughs> I won't tell you how many we lived in by then. <laughs> it's so funny because listening to you guys talking reminded me a couple years ago, my son and his best friend started selling on eBay. We were out one Saturday morning garage selling, and I looked, the car in front of us was our son and his friend beating us to the garage sales. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we get out early every weekend, that's for sure. Yeah, And I've already shipped a shirt to Hawaii, so definitely, <laughs> uh, you know, shipping's not scary anymore. No. So when you, when you said, I'm doing this, did you say, Riley, come with me, or did Riley say, hey, I want to do this too? Riley has already been thrifting and buying stuff at thrift stores and yard sales. Yeah, I give her the supply. 
I'm a supplier all the way. And no matter what she says, I definitely taught her how to wheel and deal. <laughs> wow, yeah, my brother-in-law actually started Dirty Santa last year, but it was kind of like a twist on the Secret <laughs> Santa. So they went out and bought all of the gifts for the entire family and wrapped everything. And everything they bought came from a yard sale or the thrift store. Yeah. So it was very, very interesting stuff that we got. Oh, yeah. It was a lot of fun. Nothing functional. It was all something something weird. Something weird, yeah. yeah. Oh fun. Yeah, Linda, I have no idea what's scary about Alaska or Hawaii. It's not nothing scary. Look, look, if you can ship to Maine, you can ship to Spain. Because right. when you ship something, whether it be breakable or not, you when I ship it to out of the country, I don't ship it any way different. It's just gonna have a different label on it. That's all it is. You just got to know the shipping rates, which we've talked about quite a bit. But my shipping for a tiki mug doesn't change if it's going to Montana or if it's going to Germany. It doesn't change. It's still protected and very well padded. Yeah. All right. I'm trying. I'm trying to find the Holy Grail mug, the worth of it, and uh, no one's had one for a while. Ooh. Yeah. So I want to show what showed up in Alabama. Just show because people say tiki's not everywhere. I'm like, yes, it is. Trust me, it is. <laughs> I'm trying to find, I sold one because it's, but that tells me uh, how rare it is that no one has sold one recently. So, uh, all right. So you jump in, both of you, full feet. You're like, boom, we're in this. And what's the first thing you sold? The first thing I sold was a, um, it was actually a vintage 7-Eleven Spider-Man glass that I got through an auction. Um, and I listed it on eBay. I think it sold within 24 hours and I shipped it to California. Yay. Yeah. Now, now it's so quick. Did you have that fear that, uh, I sold it too low? Um, no, because I'd actually done some research about it beforehand. So I, you know, I think I had it listed at like $49.99 and I took a best offer of like $32.99 plus shipping. Um, and really, I got in seven glasses at the auction for under five dollars, so I was really happy with that price point. Nice. So even if you did leave a little uh, meat on the bone, which you didn't, but even if you did, to get that first one under your feet and get profits and get it out the door is like, all right. Now, yeah. your first two weeks, how much did you sell altogether? Oh, at this point, we've sold almost seven hundred and fifty dollars. Yay. Yeah, between eBay, Macari, Facebook Marketplace, um, I definitely say Instagram. Yeah, we do. Riley does all of our vintage Instagram. Can you teach um, me how to go on Instagram, please? <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's kind of taking that over as her baby. So we only do vintage stuff on Instagram. This is so fun. I just love your excitement and enthusiasm. And you guys, you're way ahead of me already. <laughs> Well, and it's so weird because in the beginning, you know, she picked like we're at a yard sale one day and she picks up like this globe and it has an airplane on top of it. And I was kind of given there. I'm not sure about that. And it was 25 cents. And now I've learned not to doubt her That's right. because I literally posted it on Macari for $19.99 and it sold within 24 hours. And so I really don't doubt her much anymore. She's kind of wearing a windbreaker because I know it's cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> You do have that advantage that a lot of us don't. Is that teenager who's on the pulse? She does. Yeah, she has a good eye for it. The hats yes. were definitely her idea. Yes. So, so do you know know about Depop? Where people, the younger people than us, hang out. Mm -hmm. Oh, check out Depop. That's, you know, Nadine taught us about uh, Depop, and they like jeans with holes in them, and things have bleach poured <laughs> on them, and. That'll be fun. Oh, that 90s fringe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah all, right, that's all, right. all right. I finally found it. Good Lord. That's me forever. All right. So here's the mug they found today. So that's Tanya in Southern Alabama. I really like that. It's so cute. And she said, you know, she said she wouldn't have known had she not been on the thrifting board. And she paid, a, oh, is that a chip though? No, it's just a reflection. She paid a whopping $3. And here's a sold from two years ago for 200 bucks. Nice. Wow. Now, the thing, too, about this mug is to find it with a lid still is where you're like, oh, I got the lid still. It'll still be worth some money without the lid, but to have the whole thing, is, the, and the mug is called Mr. Smiley. So there you go. So there's what part of Alabama was she from? Uh, all she said was, I found Tiki in southern Alabama. So. Oh, okay. 
And my, my first response was, I hate to break it to you, but you don't always find holy grails. So her first tiki mug is a holy grail. I'm like, I'm going to go downhill from this point. But yeah. heck of a way to start. Want to shop more. Yeah. So uh, if you watch the show on Sunday, <clears throat> Debbie, uh, my mom had a hat box. And Riley's like, I want that hat box. And I'm like, 17 year old kid wants a hat box. And then you don't put it in his hats. And then it makes full sense. Now you see why. Riley probably has 50 hats. She has hats from the 20s. So she is a huge collector of hats. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I got a lot. I love the moment. Yeah. Pretty soon you'll be designing your own, you know, recycling them, decorating them, putting whatever on them. Tiki yeah. Them. I know. When she gets her own house, it's going to be like you're walking into the 1960s, I think. I have already created a bin, so I can just... Oh, okay. I think I, yeah, well, that's going to be a couple boxes of stuff that I want to put in my own house now. So. It's all going to be authentic. So when you turn 18 in two weeks, uh, two weeks, two months, are you going to start your own eBay or still stay with Ma? Um, I think I'm going to probably stick with her, but I want to start my own Macari account probably to sell hat. Because let's be real, she does the sourcing and I do the posting. You know, we're kind of like the Rick and Craig over here. <laughs> Who aren't in the chat tonight? So I'm gonna give them some grief. I'm like, where are they? I saw uh, Rick. Yeah. No, I saw Rick on here earlier. Did you see Rick? Oh, I must have been messing around with stupid. Yeah, well, how wouldn't your hats do better on Etsy? Like your vintage hats and things. But probably oh, she's not gonna be selling the hats. <laughs> It's not Deb. She keeps all the hats. It's like oh, I keep all the tiki. Well, I don't keep all. The tiki. Yeah, she's gonna be sourcing the hats on Etsy. <laughs> so, I kept um, telling her, I was like, we cannot buy anything else until we post. We have got to start posting. Oh yeah. Uh, since you're new, you're new, since you're new, don't don't end up like Deb and me, and probably most of the people in the chat. Don't end, don't end, don't, end, don't end up with mountains of profit piles. Keep listing. You, yeah. You want to keep sourcing too. But, but get your procedures down to keep the list and flowing because, of course, that means money's coming in and you're not going to be like, well, we lost that room to the pile. Oh, no, seriously. My husband, we have an office set up and my husband was like, we need to sell the couch out of the office so you can have room for more tubs. <laughs> and and we that's did. Husband. Now, is Riley the only child or do you have other children? She's the only one. Okay. I yeah. thought and, and so little... Do we have college plans yet? Oh, yes. I've got a whole plan. I'm going to go to the community college around here and get my basics. And then I plan on going to UNA, uh, University of North Alabama, for occupational therapy for the special education kids. Nice. Okay. <laughs> and we're going to cool. pay for that college by selling on eBay. That's right. <laughs> Smart. I just think back, man, if I if I would have had eBay in college, I, I had to work a job where I had to go somewhere. I'm like, man, to work out of my dorm room would have been so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> somebody, in the chat earlier, somebody in the chat earlier said that they were selling on eBay, I think in high school, and they were making more money than their friends who were. I saw eBay. that. I believe it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there's, there's Rick. Hi, Rick. Yes. <laughs> It's like you were summoned. Hello, Rick. <laughs> I wanted to say, make sure you. I don't know. Do you have a system set up? Like, we have spreadsheets when we buy stuff. We log in where we bought it, how much, blah blah blah. Yeah. Okay, good. Because a lot of people yeah. don't think about that early on. My accountant's like, "Okay, let's do your inventory," and I'm like, "Oh no!" It took me years before he was like, "Okay, I think I'm happy now." <laughs> Yeah, and I have all my tubs labeled with like number one, and then I have a sheet that tells me what's in the tub. And of course, every day I sell something and it's in the tub at the very bottom. So, yeah. <laughs> so what's been the biggest, biggest thing that you were like, oh, I wasn't expecting that? Or what's been the trickiest thing so far besides shipping? The trickiest? You know, I didn't really know, I really didn't know how uh, time consuming it was to post on eBay, um, just trying to get that blue yeah. dot. I think that I've watched that video of yours probably five times, you know, and sometimes they ask you questions that you're really not sure of. So in the beginning, I found myself spending so much time and energy just doing research. You know, I was like, oh, where was this manufactured and how much has it sold for previously? Um, but then I learned to really kind of see, you know, that you see that little button at the bottom that says, um, you know, sell one like this. 
um, you know, but you definitely want to make sure that you have all the correct information and you're not just copy and pasting somebody's wrong information. Yeah, that, and that's the thing. We, we've never talked about that. Deb. you got to be careful when you do sell similar. Because sometimes other people are not good at this. Yeah. yeah. You know, we put them in crazy categories because that's mainly kind of yes. so similar. Oh, they already figured out the category. And then I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. But I think in the beginning, I was just, I mean, I was spending all of my time just doing research. And then I was like, ah, it doesn't really have to be that that hard, you know. That that's what I'm trying to do with my husband. Don't spend so much time on research. I don't care this or that and the other, you know. There's pretty yeah. much yeah, we, we call it analysis paralysis. I, I've had to break uh, Kelly, my assistant, of it a few times. Where yes. like, it's a fifteen dollars T-shirt. You've already spent ten minutes researching a fifteen dollars shirt. Oh no, yeah, that was me in the beginning. Get it up, get it up. Yeah, for I sure. Think a, I think it's a fear of making a mistake. It's a fear of, of selling something for a hundred that should be sell for a hundred dollars and sell for ten. So that's exactly. why we sometimes spend too much time. Now, Riley, we are going to check back on you with you guys in like six to eight months, and I hope you're still here because oh, yeah. every other mother-daughter team we've had, the daughter <laughs> just went away down to something else. Please come oh, no, no. going away. This is my whole life. Yeah, <laughs> we enjoy it so much, and really, we have the we spend the best time together. Oh, you know, oh. we kind of have like a we when we go to an estate sale, we know what each of us is looking for, and we uh, split yeah. up, and then meet back up at the end. So yeah, you know, we're good. Yeah, it's super serious. We're always just, you know, having fun. Like we'll be sitting in the car and we went to this one and it was like a huge hoarders estate sale. <laughs> and we're sitting there looking at our phone and we're like, we're gonna get this, we're gonna get that. And just like looking at it and just screaming at each other and it's just uh, like go for the toys. <laughs> <laughs> you should do videos when you're out on the road. Do a video of you guys doing this. Yeah. Oh, we have probably three hours worth of video footage of us when we went to the 400 mile yard yeah. sale. Yeah. Yeah. We, we get into Tennessee, pull over to get gas, we get scratch off lottery tickets. I'm driving through Nashville, and this one starts screaming at the top of her lungs, I just want $100. Oh my gosh, I could. I'm like, and oh I think goodness. that she's joking because <laughs> I always joke. I'm like, oh, I just want a hundred thousand dollars. But I scratch off this little box. I'm like, oh, I can't believe. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened. So that's how our trip started. Is that Riley won a hundred dollars on yes. a scratch off lottery ticket? I can't yeah. wait till turns twenty one. We're gonna meet up with you in Vegas, okay? Yes. Yeah, we're gonna go to Vegas together. Yeah, I've been yeah. to Vegas twice, so we'll definitely have to take her out there. Well, so Lori, I will say, if you are not listing a third-party lister like I use, and you're selling somewhat common stuff, I would definitely save yourself some time and definitely do sell similar. So apparently, Mom, write this down. We should do a show on sell similar. So yeah, absolutely, especially little things like salt and pepper shakers. Um, you know, so stuff. That media, if you find someone that you know. If it, especially if it has a barcode, someone has already sold it, you just go with that one because it's there. So you got to do so little work at that point. Get yeah. your, your, your pictures in, make sure they're, they're, their stuff's a little bit correct, and then keep on trucking. Don't waste your time starting from scratch. All right, so I have never done, except for the one in Ohio, and we only did about 20 miles, I've never done a long garage sale. It's always been on my to-do list, my bucket list, if you will. You guys start out and you're like, all right, cool. We're new kids on the block and we're going to 400 mile garage sale. See you later. <laughs> so how many miles did you actually make it? I didn't go too far. Didn't no, I mean, there's just so many. We couldn't drive two minutes without pulling over to another yard sale. I mean, we would like pull over at a yard sale, park in somebody's yard, and then walk five houses down. Yeah. Yeah, so we actually drove all the way to Paducah, Kentucky, yeah. um, which is kind of where that red car is down there at the very bottom by the S, um, because we also heard there was a lot of good antique stores and stuff there. So we kind of thought, well, you know, we'll go to some yard sales and hit some antique stores. Oh, yeah. um, and then I think because it was so close to the Tennessee line, because, you know, Tennessee, they don't have like the mask ordinance or anything anymore. So, I mean, there was just yard sale after yard sale after yard sale. Oh, yeah. Wow. And I'm great going prices. People were selling stuff for one and two dollars. December, I'm going to Nashville. I can't wait. So, I heard that Nashville might be a little bit different just because of all of the, um, you know, the bars and stuff there. Because they are kind of governed by their own ordinance. 
Oh, well, um, if you, yeah. If you're out, if you're on the outskirts, like we walked into a gas station, no mask. Everybody was looking at us crazy because we <laughs> yeah. had masks on. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we say yeah. wear masks. Yeah, yep. it was only because we had masks on, not because we were wearing leopards. <laughs> <laughs> Now, how what uh, what kind of vehicle did you take for the four hundred miles? Oh my god! <laughs> well, we took my Mustang, so you know, uh, Mustang <laughs> didn't have a lot of room. Convertible. Let me tell you, we can pack a lot of things in that Mustang. <laughs> I said, Riley, we got to be careful. She was like, it's not bad until we start piling in my lap. Yeah. <laughs> Just what? Uh, my car. Do you have another vehicle that you could have taken that was bigger? Uh, we could have taken it, but I don't think that it would have lasted very long. I have yeah. a Jeep Liberty, but it goes wrong all the time and it always breaks down. So I don't want to <laughs> just like, I didn't want to just be, uh, like have a whole bunch of stuff in the car and then have to leave it and it gets towed. Mm -hmm. and then, you know, now, yeah. was, there a point, was there a point where you're like, I wish we had a bigger car? Yes. But well, yes and no. You know, <laughs> so we fun. really focused on a lot of small stuff. I feel like if we would have had a bigger car, I love furniture. Oh <laughs> so I probably would have bought every single dresser and rocking chair that I saw. Um, when we go on normal, like a safe sale trip, and she's like, oh, let's just take the Jeep. I'm like, okay. And she'll pack it full. Like she bought a radio flyer wagon and then she bought two rocking chairs and tubs. And I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Like, Do you want to drive? I don't know if I can drive with all this. Well, Mama needs a semi. Mama needs a semi trailer truck. <laughs> True. Yeah. yeah. But it was good because we really got to focus on a lot of small stuff and clothes. You know, we found some great, great deals on clothes. We had to keep reminding each other, like we are in a Mustang, so it's not that much, but it looks like a much a lot because we couldn't even like close the trunk at one point. <laughs> so you're like, okay, it's not that much. It's just a Mustang. We put, bring it all out. It's not that much. Hey, at one point I was like, I'm gonna log into pirate ship and we're gonna start <laughs> mailing stuff home. <laughs> so, that would be my next question. Uh, did you plan uh, like a hotel or a motel, or how'd you figure out what you were, where, you, how long you were gonna be driving? No, we did. Um, you know, we had really mapped it out and that was part of the fun of it. We had mapped out where were we going to eat, you know, where was the fun bakeries, where was, you know, like the cool antique stores and stuff. So we knew how long it was going to take to get there. We knew what food we were going <laughs> to yeah, eat. We um, so, yeah, we, we had it all mapped out. We had a whole yeah. binder full of stuff that we were going to do. Yeah. Yeah. You got, you got, they're so into it. It's not like they're just throwing a dart and hoping. It's like they really thought about every aspect of, of all this. And that's just, it's awesome and it's amazing. And I'm so glad that I've been a little part of, 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 of making you do that. Because when you are paid for it, you're like, I'll, I'll feel good. I don't have no kids uh, other than uh, four-legged furry ones. But uh, if I help some kid through college, I'm very happy. Yeah, no, seriously. Thank you so much, Jason, especially you and your mom. Like I said, we've, um, you know, we've learned so much from you guys over the past couple months. You know, we keep our eyes out for cookie jars and I sold a fiber optic cat that I got at a thrift store for $2. For $2. So yeah, it's been great. You guys should write a book. Thrifting tips and on the road with. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll do the cliff notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so Riley, uh, this is for you, and uh, uh, you have uh, immunity from your mother. Uh, okay. uh, is your mom doing that drives you nuts? Um, I can say just a little bit sometimes. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just sometimes. I mean, sometimes like I'll I won't post for a second, and she'll be like, "Um, what are you doing? You can't go volunteer at the thrift store if you're not like." Because every time I volunteer, I volunteered on Tuesdays. And so it's every single week. And she's like, you can't go this week if you don't post. Hey, don't don't buy it if you don't sell it. <laughs> don't give my husband right. that tip. He won't let me out of the house until I live. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, I did buy some stuff today, but it's all in my car, so we won't talk about it. <laughs> That's step one. <laughs> I think I think well, you're going to be our uh, our teenage correspondent because I I truly believe you're in it and uh, it, it's it's good to have the perspective of everyone from my mother who's pushing eighty to you who's pushing eighteen you know so well, that's actually her hashtag she was at the she was at the thrift store the other day 
And the lady was like, are you military? And she <laughs> said, no, but I'm a senior. And Emotionally. So, and she she kind of just looked at me for a second. And I was like, you know, 17 going on 70, right? And she just laughed. <laughs> and she said, come back tomorrow and I will give you a discount. Yeah. <laughs> And I went back, so. <laughs> well, maybe you're even going to run out, Riley. Do you need a teenage daughter for a weekend, Riley? Riley wants to make the money. She needs money for college. So. Uh, I have I have two teenagers around me, an 18-year-old and a 15-year-old. The 15-year-old is going to start working for me. So I do know what it's like to have a teenager around. I just don't have to deal with every part of having a teenager around because mine just come and go as they work. So, uh, you mean yeah. the expenses of having a teenager around. Yeah, no kidding. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> she really does have an old soul though. When we were at that 400 mile yard sale, we were at a like a church and they had like five buildings full of stuff. And we were standing across from each other and she holds up a rush t-shirt. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> we gotta get that. That's where I found this windbreaker. <laughs> it's so great. I wear it all the time. <laughs> well, Rachel, we yeah. have another place that you sell items at. Where else do you sell items at with your friend? Jessica. Yeah, so that's actually, we um, started selling uh, handbags last year. We went to a vintage market and we fell in love with these handbags. Um, so we got, you know, like a little booth um, at Twisted Tree Vintage Market um, and we started selling the handbags. And then, of course, COVID hit, so they had to reduce their hours. Um, and then when they opened back up, I really just wanted to expand the booth and start putting a lot more vintage stuff in there, not just the handbags. Um, and last month we did two hundred and twenty-eight dollars in sales, you know, and it was mostly from the antique stuff. So, nice. Yeah, it's, it's amazing in the chat how much everyone's just really enjoying uh, the two of you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Greg, are you typing with just your knuckles? What's happening here? <laughs> what that. in the world? You should buy that domain. <laughs> He's typing with his paws, yeah. she said. <laughs> uh, what? Um, oh, crap. Uh, getting old sucks. There we go. Riley the Teenage Thrift. Uh, yeah. Linda Riley. I love it. Linda Riley. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's look at uh, some of your – you only had one, Dud, so that's good. Oh gosh, she's gonna give me crap about this. <laughs> oh my uh, that's some fancy teens that are about twenty years past their prime. I remember when she's standing, she's standing in the thrift store, and I came from like the book section, and she's like, "Look at these jeans! Look how cool they are!" I was like, yeah, "She goes, you don't know, you don't know. These are gonna go for it. These are gonna go for so much online. You don't even know." It's like, okay, mom, we'll just wear the scene. She said, oh, we're going to make a buck on the Virgin Mary. Because on the front, it shows the Virgin Mary. Yeah, I think I paid $5 for those. And just oh. wanted to get them out of the house. So I sold them for 10 Hey, okay. you know, that's your Now, if Oxley was shopping, he'd probably still buy them. True. <laughs> uh, let's talk. You, now you've already, you've already uh, uh, given us a little preview of your scores there. So this uh, yeah. this is not an item that new sellers typically typically would be ballsy enough to ship oh out. Because you got the ears, the two parts, and uh, so I am very excited to hear the feedback from the customer when it shows up. Where where did you find this uh, cookie jar at? So I actually went to an estate sale with my aunt, and it was like just like five minutes away from the house from my house here. And I went and I saw it on the shelf and I was like, oh, I don't know about it. And then I went back home and I didn't get it. And then I had a dream about it. And I was so sad that I didn't get it. So then I went back and got it. So, yeah, she got it for one dollar. Yes. Because, wow. you know, I just got like a whole bunch of stuff, like boxes and boxes of stuff. And so I kind of like, I'll give you 50 bucks for all of it. And she's like, OK, and I'm like, great. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's good at bundling. Yeah. Now, the one thing I would say. Uh, it luckily is not white, white is kind of cream, but I would have found a dark background for this one because okay. putting this on black would have popped so much on black with good lighting. Holy cow. It would have been like the horse that was floating. Okay. That's a good tip. 
We'll do that with our next one. Because I'm like, I don't know. Oh, are you going to start posting stuff? Uh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. We just saw a fight happen. Look at that, Dex. <laughs> so where did you find the fiber, fiber optic cat at? Without me. Yeah, without her. I because Only because your mom says always get fiber optic. I actually ran to the thrift store by my work at my lunch. It was the one and only thing I bought. Um, I bought it for $2 and sold it for 35 within like 12 hours, 24 hours. Right. She bought it, but I took it to FedEx. So <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm part of the process. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. All right, now this, this radio flyer is looking a little beat. Oh, yeah, that's the thing she tried to shove in my car. Yeah, but I actually got it for $5 at an estate sale. I found it downstairs in the basement. Um, and so I just posted it on Marketplace because I definitely didn't want to deal with shipping. Um, and the guy bought it, and he's actually going to turn it into a hot rod for kids. And so I looked up the hot rods on eBay and they sell for like $400. So, but this one was a really old one and it was a longer one because it was the 18 inches. And he said they're very, very hard to find. So it kind of made me sad. I felt like I could probably get a little bit more for it at that point. But for five bucks, it was still a huge, a huge profit. Yeah. Good profit. And now you're educated too. So yes. now you have this in your brain forever because I screwed up on a set of sheets once. I, I sold them for good money, but I left a lot on the table still. Mm -hmm. And so now in my brain, it's always like, I'm going to find that set of sheets again. I'm going to find that set of sheets again. I'm going to find that set of sheets again because yeah. I don't want to make the mistake. Mistakes stay longer than the, than the successes do. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. Not, not that this was a mistake, but you're like, all right, next time I'm shooting for the yeah. moon. Yeah, because he was trying to talk me down a little bit before I got there. And then I took it out of the truck to meet him, you know, and he was like, oh, this is like <laughs> one of the bigger ones. And he was so excited. And I was like, yeah, I'm definitely not giving you a discount now. <laughs> I'm, I'm educated now. Wow. Get back to me. Yeah. Where, where'd you find the purse? Okay, so all of the high-end purses that you see um, on my Macari or eBay, I have actually started doing consignment. Um, so I have kind of started sourcing for my friends and coworkers who don't have time to do it themselves. Um, and you know, I really, I asked for 20%. So, you know, they give me the goods and I post it and keep 20%. Yeah. All right. So let me tell you, you're, you're taking too little. You're, you're you having, so? Oh yeah. You're having all this risk and you're handing them the money and you're doing all the work and you're, you're only taking 20% for friends and family. I do a third. Oh, okay. Oh, that's good to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And if it was just a customer, customer, it'd be 50, 50. Okay. Because when you get a negative and you will at some point from one of your consignments, nothing happened to them, but now it's on your record and you're like, I'm taking all the risk. I got gotcha. you. And then there's the returns, you know, yeah. you got to, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, but again, look at your brand new. You're like, already like, all right, what you got? I'm going to sell it. <laughs> What are you using? Well, I'm trying to talk everybody into selling online. I'm oh like, you guys can make so much money. She's gotten my aunt. She's got my grandmother. She's gotten two of the ladies that she works with selling. Yeah. Good job. Now, you said you bought a bunch of glasses that day. What else besides Spidey did you find? Um, so it was actually a pretty big auction. There's an auction um, in Tennessee, and they do it once a week. Um, I got Spider-Man glasses. I got some vintage, um, like, I don't know. I can't think right now. Yeah. Oh, that was actually a while ago. Um, like the first aid kits. I got a bunch of like vintage first aid kits and stuff in that lot. So it was quite a, quite oh, a bit of stuff. You got the, uh, the yellow Sesame Street. Oh, yeah. like yellow Sesame Street lunchbox. Yeah. I saw your mom just sold one of those. Yeah. All right. So I don't have a graphic for hugs. So I'll give you a dancing carlton because for you actually to spell spider-man <laughs> spider correctly i want to give you a big old hug because no one ever does it correctly oh, <laughs> yeah most people don't realize spider-man's two words with a hyphen and so to see you guys spell it correctly i'm like yay big hugs big hugs <laughs> Well, and you can tell too that that was my first post because everything was in all caps, and I definitely won't do that anymore. Oh, you know, funny, I didn't even notice that. You're right. Yeah, I was like, oh, that's a terrible post. <laughs> and you but, don't see a red flower. We always try to incorporate the red flower. Yeah, that was early on. 
But good words, though. Although they're caps, Deb, they're uh, all good words. Yeah. Uh, and and Spider Man spelled correctly, so I'm very I'm very excited about that. <laughs> now you have Seven Eleven in there twice, maybe because you did once with the hyphen and once without the hyphen. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, that was my very first post on eBay. Oh, it's great. Thirty three dollars for that glass. You know, I was surprised. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that is awesome. I, I'm just I'm so excited for your journey. I'm so excited that you're doing it together. You know, mom and I uh, definitely would have been doing it together. 30 years ago, we, we, we've always uh, garage sale and flea marketed, but it wasn't a business, so to speak, until, you know, the last 20 years. So, yeah, uh, and everyone's a little behind in the in the feed today because of the buffering. <laughs> Lisa just got to that point. She's like, oh, uh -oh. way too low. There we go. Stephanie does 60-40. So, yeah. yeah. So, tell everyone you, you, you did 20% that that was their introductory rate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and here's the deal. Now that you've been coached. Here's, here's the new rates, and uh, you're going to all enjoy it because you know always, what you're doing. Always make yeah. sure you have you keep the item in your possession. Don't let them keep that purse, and then when it's, oh, okay, I sold, give me the purse now, and they go, no, I thought it was going to sell for $300. I'm not giving it to you now because that's a big fat no-no. So, yep. yeah, no, she gave me all the stuff and kind of really gave me free reign with it. So, you know, it's definitely just a learning experience, especially selling some of the higher end purses and stuff, um, you know, because you just want to make sure you do a lot of research and you have the, you know, is it leather? Is it, you know, what is the inside material made of? Even measuring. I've learned so much about measuring purses in the past week. It's been crazy. Aren't those longer than the longer the purses? Yeah. yeah. Now, I will say, you know, you're talking about the blue dot, um, we use a third-party lister called Ingfrog, and the blue dot has not been incorporated into Ingfrog yet. So, Kelly, my assistant, uh, she has to know the right categories because there isn't that line, there is no blue dot, and she hits it pretty well. So it's one of those things where even though, even though you may keep changing the line, once you get used to it, she nails it almost all the time without being able to see it. So... Uh, if you list enough in the same categories, you should, you should get to the point where you're like, okay, I know I got to do these seven things. And then boom, I got the blue dot. Some of the blue dots you're going to be putting an A, not applicable because there ain't no character to jeans. Right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know, Alvin the Chipmunk jeans, there ain't no character family to jeans. I do have a pair of Sesame Street jeans listed. See, there are some, <laughs> with so few and far between. All right, so what's next for you too? What all right, you did you did you you're, you're off and running, you're on multiple sites, you're volunteering. Oh wait, uh, you both have real jobs, right? Yes. Uh, real job. You both have yeah. real jobs. So how do you figure out that balance between the real job and the uh, at home job? You know, I really just try to get myself on a good schedule, you know, whether it's, you know, am I going to take five pictures today and try to post them while I take my lunch tomorrow? Um, you know, just really learning that balance. Um, and then, you know, early on, I wanted to take a bunch of pictures and post things as soon as I took a picture of it, because I was just so excited to get that <laughs> stuff live. But now I've learned today, I'm going to take a lot of pictures, I'm going to get a bunch of drafts going. And then while we're sitting there watching baseball, I can, you know, make those things go live. So I work a lot. Um, I work Friday through Sunday. So then I have like Monday through Thursday. And so Mondays and Tuesdays, that's when I work at the first store and buy a lot more stuff. But I mean, then Wednesday and Thursday, that's when it's open. Because right now, schools aren't, I'm not in school. I'm just doing virtual. So it's really just free range. So I have a lot of free time. To post stuff. And, and Larry, oh. how, how are your grades, Larry? Phenomenal. Eyes. Oh, are they phenomenal, Ma? Yeah, they are. Yes, no, yeah. for sure. I'm top A student. Well, yeah. yeah, she is. She probably, she probably helps all the other students anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah, she does. Last night I looked at my mom and was like, hey, what else do you need me to help you with? She goes, oh, you need a post. I was like, yeah, but I got some homework. And she's like, no, do school first. I was like, okay, gotcha. Good mom. She actually found a bunch of books at the thrift store and that she said that her friend wanted and then turned around and sold them to her friend. <laughs> yeah, I did do that. I did do that. <laughs> Pretty that's good how, price. That's how you do it, Riley. That's how you do it. good price. Well, you know, Riley, you can teach people and charge them to take your course. You know, like our next guest next week, you could be doing your own little classes and courses and take them out thrifting and yeah. take them some money and take them tiki drinking. Yeah. I wasn't enough for that yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
When, when you've banked a thousand dollars, Riley, then you start saying, "All right, friends, I'm going to teach you how to do this. I'm going to cost you this much. But I've already made a thousand dollars in the last two months, and you could do that too without having to make pizzas or serve soft serve. You know, you yeah. could do it from the, like like Mom said. You can do your work while you're watching baseball or while you're watching football or while you're watching Big Brother like I do or the Mandalorian <laughs> for two weeks. So, you know, <laughs> so you, this is the great thing about our job is you can do a lot of the work while you're sitting with your family or your wife, your husband, your kids, your dog, your dad, watch TV, but you can still be working, but still be engaged with the entire family. And, you know, as long as you know what you're doing, pretty easy. Yeah. Yeah. Over but doing that work at night, get these listing and or research, easy peasy. Yeah, most of my hey, friends you, are- hey, you, throw, you start throwing a party, Debbie? <laughs> the girls just came home. I say, what the heck? The party just broke out. I know, I'm like, oh, you weren't that brief out yeah, the girls. The party just came. I was thinking another idea too, Riley. I know most of us, our favorite part is thrifting, but if you have friends, they're like, well, I really don't want to sell, but they could also source for you. Keep it going. All right. Thank so uh, it is October. So October, November, December, January, February, March, April. All right. Let's come back in May. So a little bit after six months from now. Yeah. Let's see where you're you're at. At. Let's see uh, where you're at in terms of sales and maybe new platforms, uh, new hats for sure. I will have a new hat for of the next show but yeah definitely because i really do think that you're in it for the long haul it i think it's inspiring and i want everyone who's watching this if you have a teenager in your life who isn't doing anything like this show them this episode and then make sure to come back in a little over six months and we'll see uh where riley and rachel are at and if you guys need any help with anything especially the things that you've learned from mom and me uh if you find that mr smiley tiki mug or that great cd Feel free to hit me up. I'll be more than happy to help. And uh, I, you know, nothing. I, I enjoy nothing more than seeing everyone succeed at being their own boss, whether it's part time yeah. or full time, like Devin and I. Uh, I love seeing it. I love helping. And uh, as a little tease, I won't be in my city this weekend, and I will be sourcing in the city I'll be in. So keep your eyes peeled if you're out this weekend. You might bump into me. Would you be shopping for CDs? <laughs> uh, I will be doing some music shopping, some antiquing, because this city has great vintage stores. Oh. So it won't be in Alabama, I don't think. Uh, okay. so, it will be hard to spot us in the store. True. I'll definitely be wearing this. So keep your eyes peeled. You might see me this weekend. All right. Do you want to fly get to this city? I am flying to the city. Oh. Yes. This was really fun. We definitely want to have you guys. You know, Narrow it down, Jason. I, I will say it's this this end of the country. The southern end? The west. The southern the, the west. The western, <laughs> southern end of the country. I will say that. I'm not going I'm not going too far from Vegas. There's your little hint. There you go. Oh, oh, I'm I'm going going to go. If you girls happen to be anywhere near Nashville the first couple of weeks of December, let me know because we might run into you. We could do it for my birthday. Yeah, that would be a good birthday trip. Her birthday yeah, is December. Yeah, her birthday is the 3rd of December. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know these things. Hey, we can go to Buffalo Exchange together. Yeah. And our hats. <laughs> I, I see I see some videos in the making of the three of you right there. Well we yeah. want to go in Southwest this time. Tony told my husband Rich bring in an empty suitcase with us. You know, we'll bring yeah. Yeah. one empty so we can source and bring things back with us. Hey, we'll take it home with us because we're only like an hour and a half away and I'll just ship it to you. Oh, yeah. Okay. We won't bring the Mustang this time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Give Riley and Rachel a huge thumbs up down below there. If you're new and you've not subscribed, please subscribe. Click the bell. Let you know when we're going live. And like I said, don't forget, no Sunday show this week. We'll be back next Thursday with Lisa. And if you are a breast cancer survivor and an online seller, and I don't care what platform you sell on, any of them, any of them, uh, and you want to be part of the panel, we would love to have you to hear your story, to hear your journey, and of course, to let others know, be aware of breast cancer and what you need to do to check out for it. Uh, make sure you, you don't have it, or if you do, What's the next step? So uh, please join our panel. Message me, message Debbie, or message Nadine, and we'll get you on the panel. And we're we'll for men too. It's a male survivor. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Because men don't realize they can get it, and they they need to know that. So uh, Riley, Rachel, thank you guys very much. 
Uh, I loved having a hat show tonight. It was an on the fly <laughs> thing. And we will definitely have a hat show again in six months. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Debbie, thank you very much. And good luck if you have uh, your duty tomorrow. Oh, I, I, I don't have to tomorrow. I call back on Monday. They're just, they're just keeping me. All right. Okay. <laughs> thank you, everybody. We'll see you soon. Have a wonderful uh, evening. Stay safe. And uh, I'll, maybe I'll see you in a thrift store or music store on Saturday or Sunday. Keep your eyes open. I bet yeah. I know where you're going. Cheers.